Hey, this is Arpita and you've tuned into the Agile Soul. In today's video, I'm going to help you understand when to use Agile practices and when it might just be an overkill or it might not just be the right time. And to help me help you understand when to use Agile frameworks and when not to, I'm going to call upon the Kinevin framework. So what is this framework? Before I answer that, I'm going to explain what the word Kinevin actually signifies. By definition, Kinevin means habitat or place. But the significance of the word is the various elements or factors in our day-to-day -day environment and experience that influences us in ways we can never understand. And it is because of this significance of the word, Kinevin, is known as a complexity framework. The Kinefin framework is known as a complexity model. Sorry about that. Now, there are two types of complexity models. One is the sense-making model. The other one is the categorization model. And Kinefin is the sense-making model. The difference between the two? A sense-making model is when your data precedes your framework. And a categorization model means the framework precedes the data. A little ex ex example to explain these two models a little better. A categorization model is your typical two by two matrix where you look at the data at hand and you place it in one of the four quadrants based on where you think it is most relevant. What does this mean? It means you are forcing your data to fit a framework that you have predefined. But in the sense-making model, we first look at the data at hand. We look at it, we analyze it, and then based on that, we prepare a framework to help categorize, to help make sense of that data. This could be a two by two matrix, three by three, or any other matrix that you prefer. Thus, Kinefin works in that principle as well. Now that we've understood Kinefin, let us look at how to build this framework. Now imagine yourself as this black dot. We're going to call it disorder, which means the place of not knowing which system you belong to. And what we have done is we've divided the systems into four, the simple, complicated, complex, and chaotic. What does each of these systems mean? Now a simple system is a system where there is a direct effect between the cause and if there's a direct relationship between the cause and effect. Here it's usually predictable and repeatable. It's something that you have tried and tested in the past and you know what needs to be done. So the only requirement or the, not the only, the main requirement to work in a simple system is that you have the ability to follow steps. Now, as an example here, I could give following a recipe. People have done it in the past. You know how to make it. And there are typically these standard steps that you do. You follow one after the other and you get your recipe. Now, what is the next system? This is the complicated system. Over here, there is a relationship between cause and effect, but it's not obvious to untrained experts. And it is to help us understand this effect that we need experts. So the requirement here to work in a complicated system is to have expert knowledge. An example here could be to build a, kind, a car, right? Today, you and I could not just get up and say, oh, I'm going to build a car. It doesn't really work that way. We need an expert to come and tell us what are the components, what happens, what happens when you link a, a particular gadget to another one and it, things like that. And they are the trained experts, they know best, which is why you bring them to work on these kind of projects. Third in the system is the complex system. Now here, this is a system without causality. Here you typically conduct experiments and based on how that experiment goes, you either expand it, you amplify it, or you dampen it. One thing to note here about the experiments is there are two types of experiments we can conduct. 
The first one are face, fail safe experiments, right? This is where you have a foolproof plan, you know what to do, you conduct an experiment with all steps known, and you know that the outcome is going to be successful. But in a complex system, we prefer doing the safe fail experiments, wherein we ask you to try based on your knowledge. Sorry, system was stuck. Where we enable you to find the solution. And in this process of enabling you to find the solution, if it's a success, we amplify it. And if it's a failure, we reduce it which is why safe fail experiments. We have a plan for both success and failure. And that is most important when you're working in a complex system. An example here is you're building a new tool, right? Yes, there are people who've done built similar tools in other organizations in the past, but you don't want to copy what somebody else has done because maybe the scale of your working, the kind of product, et cetera, is different. So you try, you try to build a tool in a certain way. If it works great, you have a plan to expand it, to build it, to add more features. If it fails, you go back to the drawing board and you start again. And chaotic. So chaotic, I think just goes with the word sense of chaos, right? That it's quite self-explanatory. Over here, there is no direct relationship between cause and effect. And what is most required in these kind of chaotic situations or chaotic systems is the strong leadership. Now, chaotic systems here can be of two things. One is, of course, when you enter a chaotic system by mistake and there's so much going on, you just need somebody to take on leadership and tell you to, this is what you need to do to get out of this system ASAP. But Within the Connecticut framework, we also have another idea for chaotic systems. You could also enter these systems consciously. You typically enter the system when you're innovating something, when you're trying something new, and all you need to do is get something out of the door ASAP. Even then, you need the strong leader to come and tell you, we're gonna do these five things, we're gonna get this out and the products out the door. We need the prototype out fast that's when also you can be in a chaotic system and you've entered this knowingly, which can also be good. Now that we understand the different frameworks, let's understand how these frameworks help us make decisions, i.e. the decision models. Putting us in the center again in disorder, quick reminder, disorder is a space of not knowing which system you are in. Now, let's say you have identified which system you are in. I'm gonna, by example, show you what decision you make in each of those systems. So let's say you are in a simple system for now. What is your decision-making model here? It is to sense, categorize, and to respond. What, do you, what does this mean? You sense the problem at hand. You know, okay, this is what I need to do. You categorize every all the information that you have, and then you respond to it. You put it in steps. And typically here you have best practices come out of this because it's, as mentioned before, right? It's tried, it's tested, you know what are the best way to do. If you are making pasta, you are not gonna cook the pasta first and then boil it. Best practice says boil the pasta first. It's, it's just the best practice to do, which is why the decision model is as such. Now, what do you do if you were in a complicated system? How would your decision-making model differ? Well, in the complex system, your decision making model changes from sense categorize respond to sense analyze respond. Over here, again, a reminder of what was the requirement. Expert knowledge was what we required in when working in a complex system. So as an expert with my expert knowledge, I look at everything that I have, I sense the problem, I sense the data that I have, I analyze it first based on my area of expertise, and then I respond to it. So in these situations, what, come, what kind of practices come out? You have good practices. I'm gonna take a step back here to explain the difference between good practices and best practices. Best practices 
very common we all know it there's typically one way of doing it it's tried it's tested and which is why it's called best practice but what is good practice well here the reason we say good practice is because your method of making decisions is going to depend on your ex on who the expert is right we have a lot of experts on the same topic and each expert based on their knowledge has a way of responding to a situation has a way of making decisions that does not mean that one expert is right and the other expert is wrong both of them are right in their knowledge bases in their expertise and if in this system we say i have an expert but i'm going to tell you to do practices that were defined by another expert you are going to make the expert quite unhappy he's going to get very upset which is why here we say good practices now let's come back here and let us go to the complex system what kind of decisions do you make when you are in the complex system the decision model here is more to probe to sense and to respond as mentioned the complex system is where we're going to experiment a lot right that is the whole probing phase where you're experimenting and based on your experiment you are sensing what was the result was it a success was it a failure and based on that you respond by amplifying or amplifying and it is typically here you have emergent practices agile frameworks for example it has it comes out of these kind of models uh, these kind of system lastly is the chaotic model now when you are in this model it's very important to understand again the decisions here it it is act sense and then respond here because the situation demands strong leadership and it demands actions you first act based on everything that's happening around here you sense what your actions did and based on that you make you respond you make the next steps over here we typically have novel practices because in that given moment the decision that was made was right it's easy for us to sit back later and say hey in that moment you did not make the right decision but we want there right which is why you trust in the people who are making these decisions that's novel practices very important to understand now so far we have covered what gnfn is how do you build the framework what are the different systems and how do we make decisions within these systems why was this so important though because a lot of times we have all faced that situation where the decision making is typically one size fits all right you have certain people who have a set of knowledge and they just make decisions without really understanding the problem without understanding what kind of system you are working in and it's just oh i'm just going to make a decision irrespective of which system you work in and that has worked in the past but it has, there's always limitations to it and what we are encouraging now especially with holy agile practices is the idea of understanding your data understanding the problem at hand categorizing and based on that responding because it's no more a one size fit all system and that is why it is very important for us to apply these gnfn models to life you can apply to any kind of system or problem or task that you're doing because it just helps you make decisions better but there is one thing you need to keep in mind when you're looking when you're working with gnfn um and that is the boundary between simple and chaotic let us now repicture the framework in, into this puzzle and if you notice you have of course simple complicated complex chaotic just take note of the boundary between simple and chaotic it isn't connected or isn't it as smooth as everything else so in most of the images that you find online or any other videos that you see this would this boundary is usually depicted as a cliff or as a wave and the symbol kind of goes like you know like a wave and the reason for this is it is possible to transition from one system to the other when it's chaotic com chaotic to complex complex to chaotic complex to complicated complicated to complex complicated to si simple and vice versa but the one transition that is 
that has the highest impact of danger is this transition from simple to chaotic. There's technically no transition there. It's more of a cliff. You are going to fall. And the reason is because when you work in a simple system for too long, you start to see things as black and white. It's simple. You know there are certain best practices. One thing leads to the other and that's it. And you start moving from the center of the system towards the boundary of simple and chaotic you start becoming relaxed, you start taking it easy. And we call this boundary the complacent zone because you become very complacent. And what happens then is it is matter of time. The minute you hit a roadblock, you don't know what to do. Things are not black and white anymore. And that causes for chaos, that causes for confusion. And that's when you fall. And this fall based on how long you've been in the simple system will affect and will have a very high impact. And typically recovery from here is very, very expensive. Um, which is why it is always suggested to really, if you're working the simple system at regular intervals, always do a check-in to check if is your problem or is your task or is your project still a simple system or has it transitioned to something else and you haven't realized it. It's very important to have regular check-ins, especially when you're in the simple system. As an agile coach, I recommend it for all systems, but I emphasize on simple more than anything else. And yeah, this is something that you just need to be careful of. And this entire thing is what we call the Kinevin framework. I would like to thank all of y'all for watching this video. Thank you so much for the support. Please, please, please don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, with your colleagues on LinkedIn, wherever possible and subscribe. Very, very important. Hit the bell icon. And whenever you share the video, tell them to subscribe too. Don't forget that. You can reach out to me for questions, for suggestions, for comments, et cetera, on Facebook on YouTube, on LinkedIn. Uh, the Agile Soul is also now on Quora. The space is the Agile Soul. And of course, you can always reach me on my website for feedbacks, questions, comments, everything. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Ciao.